Yo, what is going on Fantasy Addicts? I'm your host, That Fantasy Addict, and today we are going to be mocking. We already did one mock draft video. We did that as 12-team PPR mock draft with the first overall selection. This one's going to be same settings, 12-team PPR, but we're going to go draft from the second overall position. So we're going to give you guys a variety of different draft positions so you can kind of see what's going to go on based on every single possible draft selection that you can have. We'll also do some 10-team drafts, maybe a few 18 drafts, and some 14-team drafts as well. Let me know in the comments what settings you want to see, like Superflex 14-team from the fifth slot, whatever you want, just so I know where you guys are drafting from or what you guys just want to see, and I'll make sure to put that out for you guys. I'll try to do two maybe three mock drafts a week, maybe even more if I got enough time. So yeah, I'm gonna make sure that I bring you guys a lot of mock drafts this off season to really help prepare you. This mock draft is being done on sleeper.app. There's a mobile app or you can do it from the website. I prefer the website, but the app still is very, very good. It's definitely probably the best out there. Not only if you have your leagues on here, can you really customize them pretty well, but also the mobile app just looks phenomenal. It looks so much better than any other app like NFL, ESPN. That stuff's all right, but Sleeper definitely is just a lot more aesthetically pleasing than all of the other ones. So I'm doing it on here. I will leave a link to this website in the description below and let's hop right into this mock draft. Second overall pick, 12 team PPR. All right, first overall, Christian McCaffrey. Pretty standard, that's usually gonna happen in the mock drafts and in regular drafts. Christian McCaffrey seems like the consensus RB1 right now and our consensus first overall pick. So no surprise there. We were all prepared for this. Saquon Barkley seems like the consensus RB2 as well. He has a little more, a little better floor than some of the other guys. And he also easily has the potential to be an RB1 with over 25 PPR points per game. He's in what should be an improved offense and still not a great defense, so they'll be behind in games, so Saquon Barkley will be involved in the passing game as well. Obviously, he's one of the best runners in the league, so when they are winning games, they're not afraid to just give him the ball. And he was playing through an injury for a lot of last year, so his numbers were worse than they would normally be, so as long as he's healthy to start the season, we can expect a more productive season out of Saquon Barkley this year. They also have decent weapons like Darius Slayton, Golden Tate, Evan Ingram, when he's healthy, of course. So they can't just stack the box every single play because there are some other players that defenses do need to know about and still be paying a little attention to. So he's a perfect pick. Could he bust? I guess, but no more than anyone else. No, pretty much no one else has a lesser chance of busting than Saquon Barkley does. So we're going to take him right there. Cool with that pick. Dalvin Cook goes, Kamara, Mixon, Zeke, Michael Thomas, Nick Chubb, Josh Jacobs, Derrick Henry, Hopkins, Kenyon Drake, Miles Sanders, Devontae Adams, Julio, Godwin, Aaron Jones, Tyreek Hill, Austin Eckler, CEH the rookie, Lamar and Patrick Mahomes go back to back as the first two quarterbacks. So to start off, Dalvin Cook at the third overall pick, ahead of guys like Kamara and Zeke, that's just a bad pick. Not only does he probably have a lower floor than all of those guys, he also has injury history, much more extensive than Kamara's. Yes, Kamara had some injuries throughout last season, but we can expect him to be healthy for the majority of the season. We can't really say that about Cook. Also, he's threatening to hold out, so definitely awful pick there. Kamara goes next, that's fine. Mixon ahead of Zeke, not a great pick right there. You just don't know what's going to happen with this offense, so not a great pick there. Zeke at the 106, solid pick. Michael Thomas at the 107. I would have taken Derrick Henry over him but it's not an awful pick. Nick Chubb at the 108, not a fan of taking him over Josh Jacobs or Derrick Henry. 
Jacobs at the 109, Henry at the 110, solid. Hopkins at the 111, not a fan of taking him as the second wide receiver, especially in the first round. He's on a new team, on a team that shouldn't be passing a ton, and Kyler Murray has chemistry with some of these other players, so we're not quite sure how this is going to play out. Drake, we haven't really seen him at a high level of production for an entire season, so I'm not quite sure how he's going to be. Yes, the Cardinals offense is something to be excited about, but we're not quite sure how Drake is going to be, so I'm not a fan of taking him in the first round, especially ahead of guys like Miles Sanders, Aaron Jones, Eckler, and CEH. Miles Sanders goes to the 201. Brandon Brooks, one of their, actually pretty much their best offensive linemen, I believe Pro Football Focus graded him as the best offensive guard last season. I believe a link below in the description to Pro Football Focus. Devontae Adams at the 202, huge fan of that. He should be the second overall wide receiver taken every single time. Julio at the 203, it seems like that's where he's usually going, maybe a little earlier, but I really like Calvin Ridley, and I'm a much bigger fan of Calvin Ridley's ADP than Julio's, so I'm laying off on Julio because Calvin Ridley actually outscored Julio Jones in PPR last season while they played together. Calvin Ridley was out for the last three games, but when they were on the field together, Calvin Ridley outscored him, and now he's a third-year wide receiver, which is historically when wide receivers break out. So I'm a much bigger fan of Calvin Ridley in the fourth round than Julio on the 1-2 turn. Goblin at the 204, that's fine. Aaron Jones at the 205, that's fine. Hill at the 206, Eckler at the 207, CEH at the 208. All a little bit riskier players, but they're in the middle of the second round, so they're decent picks there. Lamar and Mahomes at the 209 and 2010. Not a fan of taking Lamar ahead of Mahomes. Not even a fan of taking quarterbacks that early, but we know what's going to happen but at least take Mahomes over Lamar because we've seen Mahomes be at this high level of production for a while now, so we can be sure that he's going to be good. We're not quite sure that Lamar Jackson is going to stay at such an elite level of production. Mahomes is a little safer. Okay, so looking at our team, we obviously have Saquon, which I'm really happy about. We still need another running back, but looking at the guys left, there's Fournette, there's Le'Veon, and there's Chris Carson. Now, I was actually a little high on Leonard Fournette for the past few weeks, but I've done even more research on him and I'm realizing more just how inefficient he was. I knew he was inefficient two seasons ago, but last season his yards per carry was about 4.3 and even though I knew he wasn't that efficient, I thought that he had improved, but really he hadn't. He was incredibly inefficient in the receiving game. He had 100 targets, which is not going to happen. Jay Gruden brought in Chris Thompson, who he absolutely loves. He loves targeting him. So Leonard Fournette is a little riskier. I like Le'Veon here. He actually has a decent floor. He finished as the running back 18, I believe, maybe maybe RB 16 last season. And that was in the worst possible situation. So Le'Veon is a solid pick, but I highly doubt that if we don't take him, that he'd be taken in front of us. So I think we can wait on him. And even if he gets taken, we always have Chris Carson, who's a solid pick. So looking at other players, at wide receiver, we have Kenny Galladay and Mike Evans, who are not bad. But in the late fourth round, it could be a little risky to wait until then. But I'm sure that we'll get at least a DJ Moore, Robert Woods. Hopefully Calvin Ridley falls to me, but I'm not sure if he will. But there's value there, and I do not want to miss out on an RB2 because we still have to start two running backs, as good as Saquon Barkley is. He only takes up one roster spot. And if I wait until the fourth round to take a second running back, we could be down to Raheem Mostert and Kareem Hunt, who aren't awful, but that means that we're not going to have anyone to back them up. When we look at tight end, we see that Kelsey and Kittle are both there. So even though I'm fine with both of them, obviously I like Travis Kelsey more. With the running backs, I highly doubt Le'Veon Bell is going to be taken. So I want one of these tight ends, especially as a late second round pick. I'm very pleased to have Travis Kelsey there. I'm not a fan of reaching on Travis Kelsey, but when he falls to you at this spot, I'm a huge fan of him. Starting out Travis Kelsey, Saquon Barkley. We have some of the best 
if not the best players at their respective position. So Travis Kelsey there. Then Todd Gurley goes, who I am not a fan of at all. I would not spend anything higher than a late fourth round pick on him. We don't know how this offense is going to use him. This offense might not be great. I do think they'll be solid, but we don't know how it's going to be. But it's a new offense for him. So he's been relying on touchdowns for pretty much the entire last season. And we don't know how the Falcons are going to use him in the red zone. We really don't. And injury concerns. Even though he didn't get injured last season, it was because his workload was really limited. And he got the majority of his carries. Not the majority, but he got a ton of carries in the red zone. He finished with something like 12 rushing touchdowns. That's just not going to happen in Atlanta. They're not going to use him more in the red zone than any other team would like the Rams. He's going to get more carries outside of the red zone, which is going to further increase his chance to get injured. And even though we didn't get injured last season, that doesn't mean that he doesn't have an injury risk going into this season. He still has arthritis. It might not have popped up again. It might not have been affecting him last season, but it still is in his system and it's not going to go away. So if he aggravates it, that's going to be awful. Leonard Fournette at the 301. It's okay. I'm not a fan of taking him ahead of guys like Le'Veon Bell and Chris Carson, but it's not as bad of a pick as Todd Gurley. So now we're at our pick and the guys who we're thinking of, Mike Evans, Galladay, Le'Veon Bell. But if I wait until the fourth round for a running back, I'll be lucky to be left with Mark Ingram. There's, I'll probably be left with Cam Akers, Kareem Hunt, who I'm not that happy with as my RB2, especially considering that it means that my third string running back will probably be DeAndre Swift, Darius Geis at the best. So I'm not a fan of that. I want to take a running back here. And Le'Veon Bell actually has a floor. So we'll take Le'Veon Bell there. He might not be as good in New York as he was in Pittsburgh, but he still has a floor. Then Mike Evans goes, George Kill, James Conner, Thielen, Galladay, David Johnson, Juju, Melvin Gordon, Chris Carson, Allen Robinson, Devin Singletary, DJ Moore, Odell, Amari Cooper, Calvin Ridley, Cooper Cup, Raheem Mostert goes pretty early, Robert Woods, Jonathan Taylor, and David Montgomery. So yeah, we'd be left with Mark Ingram, Kareem Hunt, and Cam Akers. And if we wanted any sort of decent backup, we'd have to use both of our picks on those guys. And I'm not a fan of doing that. So I'm glad that we took Le'Veon in the last round. So now we can look at receivers here. And looking at the last two rounds, Mike Evans, a little early there. He normally goes later, but it's completely fine. He still does have a lot of potential for sure. George Kittle at the 304, big fan of that. James Conner at the 305, I don't think he's going to do that well this year in Pittsburgh. Thielen at the 306, Galladay at the 307, that's very late, later than he usually goes. Solid pick there. David Johnson, not a fan of him this year. Way too risky. Very, very risky. Houston doesn't use running backs in the way that they really should be used. Juju at the 309. Solid pick right there. Melvin Gordon at the 310. I'm not a fan of that. I'm avoiding that backfield. It's going to be a huge committee there. Chris Carson at the 311. Steal. Allen Robinson at the 312. Solid pick. Singletary at the 401. That's all right. DJ Moore at the 402. That's pretty good. Odell at the 403. He has a ton of potential, but... He could bust very easily, so it's a risky pick. Cooper at the 404, later than he usually goes, so that's a decent value right there. Calvin Ridley at the 405, I'm a huge fan of him, like we talked about. Outscored Julio Jones in PPR while they played together last season. Cooper Cup at the 406, solid pick. Raheem Mostert at the 407, a little earlier than he normally goes, but of course, Debo Samuel's injury. If he, if he is out for a few weeks then it definitely could boost Raheem Mostert's value, but I'm not a fan of taking him this early, especially ahead of David Montgomery. Robert Woods at the 408, safe pick. Normally, he goes in the early fifth round, so this is a little earlier, but he still is a pretty safe pick. Jonathan Taylor at the 409, super talented, but has to share carries with Marlon Mack. David Montgomery at the 410, fan of him. He was actually decent last year, but his numbers just looked 
a lot worse than they should have been. The Bears did not use him properly. They should have used him more in the shotgun because he's a vision guy. He likes to wait a little, like Le'Veon, sort of. Not as patient as Le'Veon, of course, but he does like to wait a little. He has good vision, and then he likes to cut through the holes after a few seconds of scanning out the field. So he needs to be in the shotgun, but they didn't use him in the shotgun as much as he should have. But if they use him more in the shotgun this upcoming season, I'm a huge fan of him for sure. So we need wide receivers, and obviously the first few tiers of wide receivers have already gone, but there's still value here. A very high-risk, high-reward player on a weekly basis, A.J. Brown, is still there. The Titans should throw it a little more, I would assume. A.J. Brown should be getting a much larger target share than last season. He had about a 20% target share, and with Ryan Tannehill, a 22% target share. He should be getting at least 25% right here. And defenses can't ignore Derrick Henry, so they're not just going to put a bunch of guys on A.J. Brown because the run is still going to be the heart and soul of this offense. So A.J. Brown has potential every single week. We'll take him right there. Risky as my wide receiver one, but knowing that we have Travis Kelsey, Saquon, and Le'Veon Bell, I'm a fan of that. Mark Ingram and Mark Andrews both go. Decent picks there. Mark Ingram, that's about where he's going usually, so that makes sense. He's going to share time with J.K. Dobbins, but this is a good offense, and they love to run the ball, obviously. Mark Andrews at the 501, that's all right. He probably will play more snaps than last season. He played about like 42% of snaps last season. It was ridiculous, so he'll play more this upcoming season. And I do imagine the Ravens will pass it a little more. So that's a decent pick right there. Now... The running backs there, Kareem Hunt and Cam Akers, I like them, but as an early fifth round pick, when I only have one wide receiver, that would definitely be too early, especially seeing that we'd probably not have DJ Shark or Terry McLaurin next round. We'd be stuck with a Devontae Parker, a Jarvis Landry, who I don't really want as my wide receiver too but if we were guaranteed to end up with Shark or McLaurin I would be a fan of taking one of these running backs up here because I certainly do like them but there's just not enough wide receivers right now that make me confident that we're going to be left with one who I'm completely completely fine with starting as my wide receiver too the guys who I'm fine with starting as my wide receiver too would be DK Metcalf, T.Y. Hilton, Sutton, Keenan Allen, Lockett. Diggs is risky, but I'm still okay with it. Shark, not Debo Samuel right now just because of his injury. McLaurin, and that's about it. So we're going to have some decent receivers still as Michael Gallup, Deontay Johnson, Tyler Boyd will still be there. Hmm, now that I think about it, we could get DK Metcalf here, two sophomore wide receivers, DK Metcalf and AJ Brown, which I did videos on sophomore wide receivers heading into this season. So if you haven't already seen those videos after this mock draft, I highly recommend you go watch that. It's a three-part series. I covered pretty much every sophomore wide receiver that has any bit of hype this season, but I'm confident that Michael Gallup, Deontay Johnson, Boyd will still be there. And I'm fine starting them, but DK Metcalf is definitely a good amount better than all of those guys. The running backs left will be Ronald Jones and Alexander Madison. Hmm. I don't really want them as my third string running back. So you know what? I am going to take one of these guys, Kareem Hunt or Cam Akers. You can go either way on this, really. It's completely fine which way you go. I could not fault you for either one. Kareem Hunt is safer on a weekly basis because we saw when he returned, he was putting up pretty much about 10 points every single week. And if Nick Chubb were to go down, Kareem Hunt is a top five running back right there. Cam Akers definitely has the potential to just not play many snaps if he's not good. But I feel like he also has a better chance to be putting up 13, 14, 15 points a game than Kareem Hunt has. I don't think Cam Akers has as much top five potential, 
as Kareem Hunt, but he definitely has more RB1 upside than Kareem Hunt. He has a much higher chance of hitting that potential just because the backfield could easily be his. So we're going to go with Akers, but if you wanted to go Kareem Hunt, go for it. That's completely fine. There's no problem with that at all. Now T.Y. Hilton goes, then Keenan Allen, D.K. Metcalf, Kyler, Zach Ertz, Kareem Hunt, Tyler Lockett, McLaurin, Darren Waller, Debo Samuel, Cortland Sutton, Dak Prescott, Russell Wilson, DeAndre Swift, Stephon Diggs, Darius Geis, Shark, Gronk, A.J. Green, and Parker. Hilton, Allen, and Metcalf, back-to-back, that's fine. Kyler at the 506, regular price, that's fine. Same with Ertz at the 507. Kareem Hunt at the 508, that's all right. Tyler Lockett at the 509, McLaurin at the 510, that's fine. I love McLaurin this year. Darren Waller at the 5'11", that's about where he's going. Debo Samuel, Debo Samuel at the 5'12", that's earlier than I want to take him, especially now that he's injured and we don't really know what's going to happen with him. If you haven't already seen my video on what I think the impact of his injury is on him and on the rest of the 49ers, definitely go check that out. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Cortland Sutton at the 601. That's okay. He definitely has a lot of potential, but this offense does have a lot of pieces, so we're not sure how much playing time he's going to have, but he's very talented for sure. Prescott at the 602. Wilson at the 603. That's fine. Swift at the 604. See, I don't want to be stuck with Swift as like my second or third running back. That's just not enough security. Diggs at the 605. High risk, high reward. Geis at the 606. Risky Shark at the 607. I'm a fan of him this year. Gronk at the 608. Not a fan of him at all. He's washed up. I'm not sure how good he's going to do on this offense. There's just too many other targets. Not a fan of him. Green at the 609. That's all right. Park at the 610. That's all right as well. So now it is definitely time to take a wide receiver. And I wish Shark fell to me, but he didn't, obviously. So we'll have to settle with looking at guys like Marquise Brown, Michael Gallup, Deontay Johnson, Tyler Boyd, Edelman, and Marvin Jones should be there probably in the eighth round, so we can wait on that. First, we're just looking for a starter. So Marquise Brown isn't as safe as someone else who I'd like. Michael Gallup is a little safer. So guys like Deontay Johnson should be there next round, so we can definitely wait on them. It's between Marquise Brown and Michael Gallup for me, but Michael Gallup has a lot of potential, but he's also a little safer than Marquise Brown, I think. So we're going to go with Michael Gallup here. CPU takes Deshaun Watson and Marquise Brown. That's fine. Both of those are fine picks. So now we are left with Deontay Johnson, Boyd, and Edelman. If I needed a safe player, I'd take Edelman, but I want a safe player with some upside, not just a purely safe player. So I'm looking between Boyd and Deontay Johnson. They were both good last year, both not in good situations at all, both in better situations this season. It's a toss-up between the two. Boyd has had a high level of production for a few years. Obviously, Deontay Johnson is only a sophomore, so... We're not quite sure how it's going to play out. His role isn't secured like Tyler Boyd's is. For all we know, James Washington could break out and be the wide receiver too in that Pittsburgh offense. But Deontay Johnson did look good and is in a safer situation with Big Ben, someone who we know is good. But Tyler Boyd definitely has been producing for much longer and I feel safer with him. I'm not quite sure how it's going to play out with Joe Burrow. We don't know how good he's going to be, but it can't get any worse than last season, and he still did all right last season. So we're going to go with Tyler Boyd here. If you wanted to go Deontay, that's completely fine. If you wanted to go Julian Edelman, that's all right too, but I like Tyler Boyd there. Then Cooks goes Damian Williams, Matt Ryan, Sony Michelle, Keyshawn Vaughn, Evan Ingram, Tom Brady, Jarvis Landry, Matt Breida, Tyler Higbee, huge fan of him, Drew Brees, Ronald Jones, like him as well, 
Deontay Johnson, Hayden Hurst, Josh Allen, Aaron Rodgers, Marlon Mack, Will Fuller, Jordan Howard, and J.K. Dobbins. So I'm fine with all of those picks except for Damian Williams, the 704. They drafted CEH for a reason. Even though I think Damian Williams could be a second or third round pick if they didn't draft him, they did draft him. So Damian Williams isn't going to have that much work this season. Not a fan of Keyshawn Vaughn. I think it's definitely Ronald Jones' backfield for sure. Evan Ingram with the 708. He's definitely more talented than guys like Gronk, but he does have an extremely high injury risk, so that's a decent price for him at the 708. Hayden Hurst at the 804, earlier than he normally goes, but I do like him for sure. Mack at the 807, that's all right. Fuller at the 808, high risk, high reward. And the rest of the picks are, are pretty standard. So looking at the wide receivers left, we have Edelman, we have Darius Slayton, and we have Marvin Jones. I could use a safe player like Edelman for sure, but I feel like Marvin Jones is the perfect is the perfect player and the perfect combination between safety and potential. He is so good even when Kenny Galladay is on the field. It's they're really not that far apart in terms of fantasy production. If you look at the numbers when they're both playing together, they're not that far off of each other. And you're getting Marvin Jones in the 8th, ninth, sometimes 10th round. So I'm a huge fan of him for sure. We could use another running back because we do only have three guys. Alexander Madison, James White, fans of both of them. Tariq Cohen's okay, but he's not a super high potential guy. For me, it's between Alexander Madison and James White. Obviously, Alexander Madison has RB1 potential. If Dalvin Cook holds out, Alexander Madison's very talented and could be an RB1 right there. James White's a little safer, but has a secured workload, and in an offense, that's going to throw short passes just like they did with Tom Brady. So, obviously, Saquon's going to be good, and Le'Veon should be solid as well. Cam Akers is a little risky, so I think here we're going to go with a safer player who is still going to be okay if we have to start him for a few weeks, and that is James White. Edelman goes, then Jerry Judy. That's completely fine because my guy is Marvin Jones. Absolutely love him here. Perfect mix, perfect blend between risk and a little bit of safety. I love him there. He could realistically end up as my wide receiver too. I could easily see him beating Tyler Boyd, easily see him beating Michael Gallup and being right behind A.J. Brown on my roster, so Marvin Jones right there. I like that pick. Then Madison goes. 49ers defense goes in the ninth round. Not a fan of that at all. Emmanuel Sanders goes a little early. The Saints aren't going to be getting him the ball that much. Kamara and Michael Thomas are going to be the top two options for sure. Philip Lindsay, I don't like him there. This Denver offense is going to be a complete committee, for running backs at least. Henry, Henry at the 907, very talented tight end, but has injury concerns. That's a fair price for him. Slayton at the 909, I like that. Cohen at the 911, he's actually fairly safe. He's been a solid flex for the last few years, so he's fine there. Then we got the two rookie wide receivers back-to-back, -back, Henry Ruggs and CeeDee Lamb. Three defenses in a row, Ravens, Bills, Steelers. Then we got Zach Moss going at the 10.09. A little early for my liking for sure. Baker at the 10.10. Is that his starting quarterback? Okay, it's not a starting quarterback, so I'm fine with that. Because as a backup, he certainly has potential. He realistically does have top five quarterback potential. But he also has outside of the top 25 quarterback potential. So with Mahomes as your starter, taking Baker as a backup is completely fine. So now it's our pick. I still do like taking a backup tight end just because you're going to need him, of course, in case Kelsey goes down for a few weeks. Also, buys are obviously still a thing, so we're going to need a backup tight end anyway. And there are a solid amount of good options here. And he can go in your flex, right? A backup tight end, especially one that 
I think is pretty good, like Noah Fant, like Hawkinson, like Godert, those guys can be flex options. They're at least 10 point per game guys. So I'm fans of them, but we can wait later. So looking at our roster, we need a quarterback still. Quarterbacks available, Stafford and Big Ben. I am a fan of both of them, and there was actually some research done, and they basically found out that stacking quarterbacks and wide receivers, and even stacking running backs and wide receivers on the same team increases your chance of winning your fantasy league. And it makes sense, because think about it. Yes, it might increase your chance of being one of the last place teams, right? Because if I take Stafford, and I have Marvin Jones, and that offense just sucks, and maybe Matt Stafford gets hurt, then... Matt Stafford is completely useless for my team, and Marvin Jones' value completely plummets because now they don't have a good offense anymore. So yes, it increases my chance of having a bad team because if something goes wrong, then you could easily finish one of the la- as one of the last place teams. But if it goes right, then you have such a high chance of being first or second. And we're not playing to get fourth, fifth, and sixth. We're not playing to be guaranteed a top six team. We're playing to try to win or at least get second. If you tell me that 50% of the time I could get last and 50% of the time I could win, I'd take that all day, any day, over getting fourth every single time. So I don't want to just not take any safety because you do need safety, but you're not going to win just drafting the safest players and drafting players on completely different teams Because even though in DFS, right, Daily Fantasy Sports, if you stack players, it's very good there in tournaments because you're competing with a lot of guys. But even in this regular fantasy, you're still competing with 11 other guys or maybe 13 if you're in a 14-team league. So you do need to have that potential and stacking is the way to go on that. But this other person has Watson So he won't take Big Ben and Stafford, that's for sure. So we definitely can wait on one of them. Even though I'd probably rather have Stafford, Big Ben's still solid too. Are running backs available? There's really not any at all. Dylan. There's Duke Johnson, who I'm not a fan of. Justin Jackson. We could take Henderson. Sort of as a handcuff for Cam makers, but if anything, this entire backfield will just be a committee. Daryl Henderson's not going to own this backfield, so I don't see the point in taking him. We have Saquon, Le'Veon, Akers, and James White. That's okay. Looking at the other running backs available, there's really not anyone left at all. So... I don't see a point in taking anyone here except for maybe like Justin Jackson, but they drafted Joshua Kelly anyway, so I doubt Justin Jackson has a role here. Henderson might be the play just because I need another running back, but I'm going to take a backup tight end, obviously, so then I'm going to have two bench spots left. Maybe I'll just have to take those with wide receivers because I don't see any value in running backs anymore. And I still have four solid running backs that I'm happy with. So at wide receiver, there is Shepard, who's all right. John Brown is all right. And Rager's all right too for the Eagles. So I'm looking at those guys. Pittman's okay too, but I think there's a little more potential with guys like John Brown. So we're going to go with the receiver here. I do think there's, and there's Nikhil Harry too, but we can definitely wait on him. I want a safe and risky player kind of at the same time, a good mix between those two. So it's between John Brown and Rieger. Rieger, Rager, however you pronounce it. We're going to go with Rager for this one because he could definitely break out here. Even though he's a rookie, he's playing with one of the best quarterbacks in the league. So definitely a lot of potential there. So Stafford goes. That's unfortunate. I would rather have him, but it is completely okay because 
Big Ben is still there. His injury is not that bad for quarterbacks because... I mean, it's bad, obviously, when you injure it, right? He was out for the entire season, pretty much. But he doesn't have that great of a chance to re-injure it, right? It's it's not super scary heading into this season. It's not something that should affect him that much. And it's something that was obviously awful last season, right? But it's not really an injury that is going to necessarily hinder his production this season that much. And I really like this offense. He's an experienced quarterback. He's good for fantasy. So we're going to take him here. I don't want any other team to draft him. I want to secure a solid quarterback who I think is pretty much just as good as like Drew Brees three rounds earlier. So then looking at this round, a lot of younger guys are going. Justin Jefferson, Michael Pittman... Drew Locke, Henderson, Anthony Miller, Daniel Jones, Noah Fant, who is a tight end that I really like there, Joe Burrow, two more defenses, New England and Chicago, Preston Williams goes, who I loved earlier, but I just kept doing more research, and it seemed like I had to try to convince myself to like him, and that's just not what you want. If you're trying to convince yourself that you like him, then it's not the right player. He's coming off of a torn ACL, and he injured it in week nine, I believe. It was right in the middle of the season. He has a very good chance of re-injuring that ACL, and even if he doesn't, he has a higher chance of having hamstring issues and MCL issues than other players do. So I'm not a fan of him. Looking at who's left, the quarterbacks now available, Jimmy Garoppolo I liked. And I still do like him, but obviously the concern with Debo Samuel is there. If I were to take him, it would be assuming that Debo Samuel is fine to start the season, which once again, I did a video on him and when he should return, what should be happening, and the the fantasy impact of that injury on the rest of the 49ers. I did that video yesterday, so I'll leave a link to that video in the description below to check out after you finish watching this video. I do want a backup tight end, and... The guys who I like, there's a lot of them, so just get ready. TJ Hawkinson, Mike Gisecki, Jonu Smith, Dallas Goddard, Blake Jarwin, Ebron. He has potential to go off for like 12 touchdowns. I also like Chris Herndon. Irv Smith is very talented, but for fantasy, he is risky just because they already have Kyle Rudolph. I also like Dawson Knox, and I also like Ian Thomas. So yeah, there's a lot of guys there. There will be some waiver wire guys, and I do plan on, in the first two weeks, if I draft two lower tight ends, like these guys, like Jusecki, Johnny Smith, Goddard, and not someone like Kelsey, then I do plan on probably dropping one of them for a waiver wire pickup in week one or two if I see someone absolutely breaking out. But we have Kelsey, so we're not going to drop him, obviously. So whoever we take here should just be a safe player that can fill in for a flex if we need him, can fill in for Travis Kelsey. And that's definitely Dallas Goder. He has a higher floor than any of these other guys, but he does have potential. He's a top three tight end if Zach Ertz goes down. So I like him. Looking at the running backs available, obviously still none there. At wide receiver, Shepard is solid. I like Nikhil Harry. He definitely has a lot of potential. Sterling Shepard is safer, but we already have so many receivers that we don't really need a safe player. So I like Harry there, but we can definitely wait on him. We could use another quarterback. I think what we're going to do is take a quarterback here. Actually, no, because we, yeah, we, we have to take a receiver and a tight end. So there's probably a higher chance Godert here goes than Nikhil Harry. Actually... This team already has two tight ends, so I highly doubt he even takes a tight end. It'd be, it'd be very dumb for him to take a third tight end here. So we're going to go with Nikhil Harry. There's probably a 0.1% chance that this team were to take Nikhil Harry if I took Godert, but there's like a 0.001% chance he takes Godert. So we'll take Nikhil Harry there. 
and he goes with Shepard and LA Chargers defense. That's completely fine. We are going to take Godert as our backup tight end. He can fill in for Kelsey without any concerns when he's injured or when he's on a bye, and he can be a decent flex option if we need him. Then Jaseki goes, a bunch of kickers are going, a bunch of defenses are going. Garoppolo goes. I like him as long as Debo Samuel rests for adequate time, which once again, I cover in that video about Debo Samuel. Link in the description below. Hawkinson goes. Boston Scott goes. Both of them have a lot of potential for sure. Now our bench is filled up. We just have a kicker and defense. Don't take a kicker earlier than three rounds before your draft ends. So if you have 17 rounds, then take a defense in either the 17th, 16th, or 15th round, maybe 14th if there's a decent defense there, but don't be taking guys in the 10th round. Don't take defenses in the 10th round. That's dumb. And definitely not kickers. So, kickers available. Elliot, who I'm a fan of. Bailey, not a huge fan of there. I don't know what's going to happen with that offense. For Bass, all right. That offense should be good. McManus plays in Denver, so can kick longer field goals easily. I like that Denver offense for sure. Mason Crosby, I like that offense. Matt Gay, I like that offense. Really, it's just choosing offenses that you like at this point. Then looking at the defenses, the Vikings are a solid defense for sure. And I think they're more reliable than any kicker. So we're going to take the Vikings defense there. They're going to be playing slower offense for sure now that Stephon Diggs is gone if Dalvin Cook is gone for a few weeks or even the entire season. So they'll just be playing slower offense and limiting their opponents to how many points they can score, which is good for their defense. Then at kicker, you can really take anyone here. It doesn't matter at all, really. We'll just take Ty Forbath, I guess. Dallas is going to be a good offense, but not too great where they're just scoring touchdowns every play. Then Blake Jarwin goes. Same with Jonu Smith. I like both of them. So, yeah, that's that was our draft. Now, let's go over our draft. So, first round, we took Saquon, 102, pretty standard pick. Kelsey fell to me at the 211. I like that. Took Le'Veon Bell at the 302 because I didn't want to be stuck with a not-so-reliable RB2. Because looking at it, it would have been probably Mark Ingram or Cam Akers, and I don't like that at all. I much prefer Cam Akers as my third string running back, and then still having Michael Gallup, Tyler Boyd, Marvin Jones, Jalen Rieger, and Nikhil Harriet wide receiver. That depth is very good. We have four solid running backs in Barkley, Bell, Akers, and White. Three of those should be startable options for sure. I would like one more decent running back to pick up off the waiver wire. So for this draft, I would be looking at the waiver wire to possibly pick up. Doesn't It doesn't have to be the next Alvin Kamara in his breakout season, his rookie year, right? It doesn't have to be a huge monster breakout year, but just someone who you can start. That is the one problem with taking a tight end like Kelsey or Kittle early, right? you don't have a ton of depth at running back or wide receiver, but wide receiver, it's kind of hard not to have depth there. So I do usually prefer just taking two later round tight ends like Higby, like Noah Fant, like Goder, like Jaseki, like Hawkinson, like any of those guys and still having depth at running back. If CEH fell or if Austin Eckler fell, I would have taken them ahead of Kelsey but Kelsey fell to me, and I'm perfectly fine with that. So I like this draft a lot. My biggest strength is obviously tight end. There's no doubt about that. I would say my running backs are a borderline strength of this team. Barkley and Bell, I love that, but the depth is lacking a little bit. Wide receiver is kind of the opposite. I don't have any super, super elite producers, but I have a lot of depth. And between A.J. Brown, Gallup, Boyd and Marvin Jones, two or three of those every week should be very startable and have a decent floor. And then Rieger and Nikhil Harry, I'm just hoping one of them hits and one of them can be a solid option. Then we have Goder as a backup tight end. We can always package him and let's say Akers for 
a solid running back that we can always rely on, or we could package him and Le'Veon Bell for a borderline RB1, which I do like for sure. We have a lot of wide receiver depth, so one of Nikhil Harry or Rieger could be pretty good, and we can always trade. We can always package them and Akers for a solid running back. And yeah, I like this draft. I wish I had a little more running back depth, but that's always going to happen when you take Kelsey or Kittle so early. So that is it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this mock draft. Please let me know what you would have done instead at any of my picks. Would you have taken someone else at my first, my second, my third, my fourth round pick, whatever? Let me know. Also, let me know what you rank this team out of 10 and let me know why. Why do you think it's whatever you rank it? I want to hear your guys' opinions. Definitely go in the comments and let me know what you think of my team because the more brains, the better. Even though I'm going to give you guys fantasy advice, obviously you guys can give each other fantasy advice. Going in the comments, letting, letting me know and other people know what you think of my team and what you think of these draft picks could really help people understand who's going to be good, who's going to be bad, because I don't have time to make a video for every single person. So if you guys can, you know, go give some, go give some comments and comment on other people's replies and just even make your own comment saying what you think of my team could really help someone out for sure. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already seen my first mock draft, I will leave a link in the description below for that. I will leave a link below in the description for my other breaking down sophomore wide receiver videos, which includes guys like DK Metcalf, AJ Brown, Darius Slayton, all those guys. Once again, the most important video you could watch is certainly the Debo Samuel video on analysis of the effect of his injury. Go check out all my videos, but especially that video right there. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. It really helps smaller YouTubers like myself. And I put out daily content, not only here, but also on Twitter. So I will leave a link to my Twitter account in the description below. I put out so much content there, more content out there than on here. So if you enjoy this content, you'll definitely enjoy it there. But still, subscribe to me here because I do still put out daily content here. So I'm sure you'll enjoy that. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Peace.